I would like to remind you to give rice bodhicitta in order to, to benefit sentient beings through the practice of listening to Dharma and uh, contemplating Dharma and meditating on Dharma. And uh, we will continue our the discussion on the teaching of the Paturamchi, the the words of uh, the perfect teacher. Now, as it says, no matter how many teachings you have heard, to be motivated by worldly concern, when I say worldly concern, which means just like a desire for the greatness, reputation, and the fame, etc. So those attitude is not suitable to the real Dharma because for the real Dharma, individuals have to be honest and individuals should base on the genuine attitude. As I said yesterday, three factors, the body, speech and mind, and among these three, the most important factor is mind, not the body, not the speech. Therefore, in the Sutrayana, <coughs> as it says, mind is just like a king and body and the speech is like attendant because king leads attendants and the attendants don't have any idea where does king go or where does king walk which direction so the attendants lead by the king. Likewise, here in this teaching, emphasizes the mind, not the speech and the body. So the mind, in order to bring mind into the path, into the Dhamma, then we must make a change, our fundamental mental attitude. That's very important. Seemingly or likely we do practice physically doing prostration and we go kora, circumambulation and verbally we recite mantras, chant the prayers and make a supplication through the speech. But if your mind does not combine along with the speech, then simply making recitation or simply saying prayers do not really make a sense of a Buddha Dhamma. So therefore, in this teaching, precisely, 
precisely explain that the motivation must not be deluded or polluted by worldly concern. It's a simple, everybody can hear it's a very simple way and an easy way, but nobody does it. So that's a problem. So in order to bring self, myself or ourselves into the Buddha Dhamma, then the crucial point in the practice is to make a change fundamentally, not temporarily, and I make sure that myself or yourself or ourselves are ready to perceive the Dhamma teaching and perceive the instructions and one must get ready to, to, to accept or to attend the teaching. Otherwise, participants in the circle of uh, Dharma and uh, but your mind is very far away from the practice because the, the purpose of a Buddha Dharma is to get rid of these powerful negative thoughts and the negative obscurations. So each and every time you listen Dharma teaching, you contemplate the Dharma teaching and you meditate on the teaching, make sure that each and every time you participate in the teaching and when you go back to home and make sure that you bring whatever you receive teachings into the path or into the practice. So that's why Patrujan which is meant to be participants make sure their motivation must not be diluted or obscured by worldly concerns. Because many of us in this degeneration time seemingly we are applying Buddha Dhamma within but actually we have a great expectation in our practice like an expectation for like a desire for greatness, fame and a reputation so that is totally not suitable to the real Dhamma so the mindfulness is needed in our Dhamma practice lack of mindfulness then our mind is disturbed by the distractions and our mind becomes destructive so there you cannot focus into the practice and your mind drifts away by powerful distractions and the confusions so strictly speaking as a Dhamma practitioner one should be mindful at all times, not sometimes. At all times. The, from the moment you wake up in the morning till the time of to bed. Every manner of you, your activities, walking around and and uh, having a tea or talking with the friends any manner of your activities one should combine with the sense of mindfulness then your normal activities do not disturb your mind and uh, normal activities do not disturb your practice Eventually, <clears throat> you can strengthen the power of your practice that bring all your activities into the practice. Then all your disturbances are gone. So till that, we have to be very mindful. And we do not examine at all our own motivation 
So the, all the lamrims, the teachings of the, uh, the lamrim means the st stages of the path, like your jewel ornamental liberation, and then the words of uh, per the perfect teaching a teacher, as well as the lamrim from the Gilupa side. There are all kinds of lamrims, but the explanation is always the same. They're based on the same characteristic. Why? Because they do concern our motivation. Our actual practice is it okay. It should be okay. But then actual practice should be led by the correct motivation. So, in this teaching, precisely explain repeatedly, motivation should not be combined or disturbed by worldly concerns like a desire for greatness, fame or whatever. Explanation will continue. So and then here it says in the teaching itself. So first of all, it's most crucial to turn inwards and change our motivation. Sometimes we are ill and tired of practice because our expectation is too high. You are expecting a tremendous result of the practice, but your diligence and hard work with the practice is very limited and not enough your hard work, not enough your diligence but your expectation is too high then you get tired and you get sick and you don't want to continue your practice because you believe this teaching has no blessing or this teaching has no the energy or the blessing and you tell yourself that I'm very honest with the Dhamma practice, I'm very honest with the lineage and I'm very honest with the masters and I have been spending my time almost 24 hours with my practice but I don't get anything. So you are unable to see your own faults and mistakes but you easily see the faults and the mistakes of other things. So this is very complicated situation in every practitioner's because you are not careful with your practice and your mind is totally distracted. When you read the texts, when you read the teachings and the commentaries, the root text, And you tell yourself, yes, I can do something. It is easy. It is a simple. Teaching is a simple. That I can bring the teachings into my practice. But there is no continuity. Your practice is always under circumstances. Circumstances in the sense of like, when you are in good health, then you carry on your practice. When you are not in good health, then you stop your practice. When emotion attacks you, then you stop your practice. So you see that your situation is connected to the all kinds of circumstances that you are not really totally free from the circumstances. You are under the power of all kinds of factors, especially the emotional factors, especially the factor of the thoughts and the factor of all kinds of things. Because of this, always delaying your practice, and the time passes swiftly, but you do practice very little. In 24 hours, the maximum I think you practice three hours, 
four hours. When, I'm, when I say practice, in the sense of really practice, but to seemingly, yes, you are doing practice, like reading books, chanting prayers, the recite mantras, doing prostrations and pay respect in the temples, you visit all holy places and you participate in this and that teachings. But I don't consider this is practice at all. And this teaching does not consider this is a practice. This teaching strictly considering the practice is something that you bring whatever you receive teachings and instructions into the path and into the practice. That you really bring yourself into the Dhamma practice. So that is the sense of the practice. That is the real Dhamma practice. Not just the simply you participate in the teachings, you participate in this ceremony, that ceremony. So all are just the part of a destruction that we drift away, drifted away by powerful destructions and the confusion. Now in order to switch that, or change basically or fundamentally, one should bring first of all the most crucial to turn inwards and to change our fundamental motivation. It's so easy to explain Mahamudra. It's so easy to describe what is Mahamudra, what is Mahati, what is Madhemika. And simply you can find the words of Mahamudra and it seems easy to you saying just to watch your mind, right? And Mahamudra is to keep on saying just to watch your mind. Be in that state. And in Madhemika it says everything is empty. Emptiness of your body, emptiness of your mind, emptiness of yourself. It's rather very simple and it's easy to perceive such sense, but doesn't mean this is real teaching. Real teaching we base on the teachings of Gadampa, like this teaching, the words of the perfect masters, and they repeatedly convince us to be mindful. This is the actual meditation, and the meditators they should be paid attention very seriously and attentively how serious motivation is, mindfulness is, and the carefulness is. Lack of these qualities of the mind, and the one cannot bring yourself into the path. That's why this teaching precisely explained that no matter how many teachings you have heard to be motivated by worldly concerns like a desire for greatness, fame, or whatsoever, that is not suitable to the real Dhamma, should be given up, should be avoided. So first of all, it is most crucial to turn inward, bring your senses inward, think of carefully, examine carefully, in order to digest those, the high, the tantric teachings. It is easy to be said than the done, right? Because we repeatedly say, and all the practitioners, I think, get used to say that, oh, we have to be patient, we have to be diligent, we have to really work hard with our practice, must not waste our time, and our life is short, the death is uncertain, we must really put ourselves into the practice. We saying this. It's kind of like we become now really habitual tendency. Very. But nobody does it. That's the problem. So here it says, if we can't or if we don't make a change ourselves, then all our study and the practice of Dhamma will be no more than a seeming of the real thing. Which is very true, right? 
I do accept that and I do agree this. Lack of a master and a master's teaching. And you just count the number of teachings what you have received. And you have a well noted down in your diary book. Said that I got this teaching, I got that teaching, I have this profound teaching. And you have a long list of teachings that you have received from different masters. And you are so excited with these teachings. And when you meet all kinds of factors, and you still show your failures. The failures are still there. So when failures come to you, don't blame on the teaching, don't blame on the practice. Blame yourself. Because you never really pay attention and you really never did well Dharma practice. So therefore, the failure is always there. So, essence of this teaching or this word, Patrusha Rinpoche repeatedly presented such a powerful word. The powerful word is change. To make a change. And to make a change fundamentally. Not only on the surface or temporarily, but the fundamentally. So lacking this change then your practice is gone somewhere else and this practice will lead you to nowhere. You can spend your time in 24 hours, within 24 hours you can do meditation, you can do concentrated meditation study and uh, reflecting on the teachings and you make a prayer and you say prayers and you do prostrations and you participate in profound teachings yet you are still remain in the same situation which means your study, your contemplation, your meditation lead you to nowhere. But at least these three factors, study, contemplation, meditation, should be led you to somewhere that you can experience some benefit or some changes and make yourself excited or get some powerful inspiration. And you have to be very inspi inspiring with the practice, with the study. From there, then you will become very determined with your practice. Otherwise, you say, oh, Buddha is a great master, or oh, Buddha is a great individual, but how do you know? Simply reading or simply hearing the life story of a Buddha, that's not inspiration at all. To be inspirational or to be inspiring with his teaching, one should be digesting his teaching entirely, thoroughly. So that makes you change fundamentally and then make sure that yourself will be so proud of with the teaching and the lineage and the Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha. Must not left yourself behind with nothingness. And you should have, you should have experienced some benefit from the teaching, from the practice. Being Buddhist is a simple because it's a simple identity saying that, oh, I pay homage to Buddha, I pay homage to the Dhamma, I pay homage to the Sangha. Just that enough? Just this enough? No, I don't think so. So you have to bring some profundity in your practice, in your teaching, so that yourself make determined into the path, make sure that I will never step back and I will walk forward until I reach to the destiny which you call enlightenment or omniscient state of Buddhahood. So, Patru Rinpoche precisely, repeatedly explains that make a change and a change and a change. So, we must concern or we must consider did we change or are we changing or will be changing? Did we change in the past? Maybe some of you have been 
They practiced 10 years, 20 years, and they have met great masters, and they have received the great teachings. Did you ever try those profound teachings in their practice? From there, did you really make sensible or visible change? We have to make a visible change and a sensible change. Or are we changing? I believe many of us are still practicing, right? And we have met the great masters and they keep on meeting masters and they keep on participating in teachings, keep on participating in ceremonies. And they keep on receiving teachings. Did you really bring them into the path? Did you really strictly follow the rules and the regulations over designed by the great masters and the teachings? So we know we didn't and we are not and the Seemingly, we will not, perhaps maybe little, but not much. So therefore, Patrimbi says, make a change self. Otherwise, your study, your practice of Dhamma will be no more than a seeming of a real thing. Therefore, when we listen to the teaching, or whenever we practice, but in the teaching it says you, but I rather prefer I rather prefer to say we. I that I, I may prefer this. So therefore we, because I'm included too. Why? Because I'm not master yet. I'm still struggling through the path. So I think we are all same group. But here I'm not teaching you. Don't think that Sanjayanabha is giving teaching. Don't ever mention that Sanjayanabha is teaching. So you just say Sanjayanabha is repeating the teaching of great masters. So this is a proper way. Because anyway, we listen to the teaching or what, whenever we practice, be it meditating on a deity or doing prostrations or circumambulations you make or reciting a mantra even a single money recitation. When Bhadra Maharaj says a single, a single, which means the recitation of Om Mani Pe Mahon is the most easiest way of practicing, isn't it? Even without catching up its meaning, its profundity, the meaning of the profundity, you can still recite the mantra Om Mani Pe Mahon. So therefore, Patrim says, even a single money, it's always essential to give a rise to bodhicitta, mindfulness, genuine motivation. In Hinayana tradition, in the teaching of Hinayana, they emphasize very strictly your motivation, my motivation, his motivation, her motivation. In Tibetan words, Kunlong. I ever mentioned this morning. So Kunlong is the motivation. And every aspect of your Dhamma practice should combine or should be laid by correct and a perfect motivation. In Hinayana, their motivation is feel disgusting in this samsaric situation that is the pain and the suffering and the miseries of a body, speech, mind in this samsara. Nobody wants that. Everybody wants a pleasant situation. Everybody wants a happy situation, a joyful situation, excited situation. Nobody wants unpleasant situation. Nobody wants miseries, pain, suffering. So Hinayana teaching based on renunciation. Renunciation. 
Tibetan word to Ninjung, that's a renunciation. Feel disgust, the situation of a samsara. With these four major factors, unpleasant factors, the birth, old age, sickness, and the death. These four major unpleasant factors bind us, never let go of. So, until you digest this experience, the great masters that never give a teaching further than this for noble truth. In Mahayana, our motivation based on that, particularly the Hinayana way of thinking, and then plus the aid, compassion, loving kindness, and the bodhicitta. Because Mahayana practice is a much wiser, much expanding than the Hinayana way of practicing. Therefore, they expand their, the capacity of the mind. They try to give up being selfish. And they think or consider for the well-being of sentient beings. And they don't say, my. They say, ours. Our problem. Our sicknesses. So their capacity of the mind is much expanded. So we call this is the mind of enlightenment, which is the Changshu Jisem. So that's the general way of uh, the, the changing our basic or fundamental attitude. To make it change, we need to change. If you don't change, your practice will go nowhere and, will pra and your practice will not benefit and will, your, your practice will be not beneficial. And the vast skill in the means in Vajrayana, the attitude of the secret Mahayana has many paths to enter into its practice because the attitude the secret mantrayana contains many methods for accumulating merit, accumulating of merit and accumulating wisdom. It's a profound and a vast. And uh, profound skillful means to make the potential, it says here, the profound or skillful means to make the potential within us manifest without our having to undergo the great hardship. Whereas in Sutrayana, there are all kinds of the, the great hardship. Not as simple as the Tantrayana. Sutrayana does have all kinds of hardship that we have to go through the training of mind with a great hardship. So it's not easy. It takes time, need a lot of energy. We have to be very focusing. Whereas in Tantrayana, the power of expanding the methods or the path or the practice is much greater than the Sutrayana. So therefore, it is says the Tantrayana or the Mantrayana is the greatest and the more skillful and much more profound because of the reach of merit, the reach of wisdom and the reach of means and the methods, the remedies. So that make you very much a potential and a simple, not simple, easy to bring yourself into the practice of this Tantrayana. And you don't need to be concerned or you don't need to be considered the 
going undergoing great hardship. But Tantrayana, it has the same goal as a Sutrayana. The, our goal is the same. Our final, final, the destination is the same. Our final goal is the same. Aim is the same. Because all the Sutrayana and the Tantrayana, all the teachings are based on to be free from confusion. To be free from confusion. To remove confusion. To dispel the confusion. To dispel this, this dualistic mental attitude. The powerful duality. The mind of a duality. Tibetan was a yin zen which is a dualistic mental attitude, arises from the ignorance of fundamental powerful ignorance. So the methods, parts and remedies given in the teaching of both Sutrayana and the Tantrayana is strictly or solely or singly for the removing or to, for the dispelling or for eliminating the powerful confusion. That's it. But then the way and the means make differences. Now, differentiate between Sutrayana and the Tantrayana by the methods and the skillful means. Because the Tantrayana has, Tantrayana is rich in methods. Because you can get through or you can cut through difficulties without much more applying the remedies. Whereas in Sutrayana, more applications, but in Tantrayana, less applications. So therefore, you don't need to go through the difficulties of practice. And then Tantrayana, it is for those with the with the sharp faculties. Therefore, the Mantrayana vehicle is the great or greatest. Now, in the teaching of Tantrayana, it begins in this teaching. There are all sorts of explanations, but they begin or they start. They start from a simple point. It says that. But I find the translation book of this commentary, or not, not commentary, the exactly the root text translated into book, the word of my uh, the perfect teacher is it totally wrong. So therefore I request you don't rely on that book please. I don't care who the translator was, but lack of a Tibetan language and the grammar always make problem for yourself and others. So therefore you have to be very careful and you have to be very professional, the Tibetan grammar. That's why I'm saying don't be proud, it's just a simple, simply can you read and read and write the Tibetan book. You have to be very professional. The relationship between the teaching and the interpreter is based on professional skill. Not only your wise or smart or intelligence alone. You have to be very professional. The profession is the base on both the speaking, spoken and the written. So therefore, translators, be careful. When you translate those or such a profound teachings into another English language, then you have to consider first the Tibetan grammar. That's very important. Don't just simply be satisfied with your simple Tibetan knowledge because it will destroy the lineage and it will destroy the profound teaching. We have no problem with the Tibetan language, but the problem is the other languages, English, German or whatever. So, because it keep on translated as aspiration, but there's no aspiration at all in, in, in this teaching. It is says that the basic motivation 
change basic motivation in the Tantrayana practice. So it says there are few kind of uh, like aspects given in this teaching, like a perfect place, the perfect teacher, the perfect community, the perfect Dhamma, perfect time, and the perfect practice in the Tantrayana practice. The perfect place is a place, the palace of Dhammata. So in the Vajrayana teaching, or when masters perform the initiation or Abhishekha, they convince you to make change this universe, or at least this environment, transform into the palace of Dhammata, right? Did you ever hear this? But you have forgotten, right? So therefore, palace of Dhammata. So this simple tent is a huge tent. When you look at it, it's just a tent. And everybody can see as a tent. But in the practice of Vajrayana, it convinces you to make a change or to perceive your vision change into the palace of Dhammakaya or Dhammata. So if you are able to transform that, this place, into the palace of Dhammata, then the individuals inside this temple or palace, the males are Dakas and the females are Dakinis. This is a deniable situation, undeniable situation. It is initially it is innately. It's not that something like we temporarily create it. Artificially, we make them as a Dhaka, we make them as a Dakinis. No. Initially, they are never separate from the Dhaka's Dakinis. When you say Dhaka and the Dakinis, the Dhaka is a symbol of the emptiness. The Dakinis is a symbol of the Shunyata in Sanskrit, which is emptiness. So we try to catch the essence of the vision, essence of the factor, essence of the figure of what you experience, what you perceive from this temporary dualistic mind. So in the Tantrayana teaching, the topic changes. Ch changes in the sense the perfect place is the palace of Dhammata, the perfect teacher is Samandabhadra, not ordinary person. And the perfect community is the community that all individuals are the lineage of realization, or the holder of innit awareness. Tibetan words Rik Zin. I have um, explained this morning Rik and Zin. Rik is awareness, the Zin is a hold. So, holder of the lineage of, a holder of the, the uh, uh, awareness lineage. And the perfect Dhamma is a Vajrayana. Because why the Vajrayana is a perfect Dhamma? If you are able to apply this profound teaching within, then there is no doubt to be enlightened in this single life. You don't need to be wait for too long, generation to generation, lives to the lives. In this simple life, in this single life, you can be enlightened if you do apply the Tantrayana teaching seriously. The perfect time is the ever-revolving will of eternity. So we hear always a teaching. Birds singing, that's also teaching. People cry, the sound of a cry is also teaching. All kinds of sound that you hear in the dualistic point of view, there are distinctions. You are dis distinguished between pleasant sound, unpleasant sound, and a pleasant emotion and unpleasant emotion, and the good thoughts and the bad thoughts, positive thoughts and the negative thoughts. 
these distinguishments created by our negative dualistic mind. Whereas the great masters of the Tantrayana, the who has been realized the true nature of the external factor or inner factor, that one can hear always the sound of Dhamma. There is no ordinary sound for the voice. All the voices, all the sounds are the sounds and the voice of the Dhammata. If you are able to reach that level or that stage, then all sounds are pleasant and uh, non-stop or ceaselessly you can hear the sound of Dharma at all times. So therefore, it says the perfect time is the ever revolving the will of eternity. And it says here, reflecting on the helps us understand how things are in reality. It's not that we are creating an imagination that does not really exist. Imagination, you visualize the image of a guru, image of a yidam, image of a dhamma protectors. You can see all kinds of images the peaceful and the wrathful, the gurus. All images are not truly existed there. That's just the reflection of your mind. So it just arises from the, your mind. It is the reflection of your true nature of mind. So therefore, they are there. You can see, you can hear, you can recite the mantra, you can see the mandala, external mandala, the inner mandala, scent mandala, flower mandala, or painting mandala, draw mandala, all kinds of mandalas you can see there. But this is not really the, the essential way of Vajrayana practice. For the beginners, we needed the forms of the deities, mandalas. But in the reality, these are just a reflection of your mind. If you one can bring these images into your mind, into your practice, then no longer you need these forms and the images. Until that, you have to keep the images. And the mandala. We need to perform the pujas. We need to perform the mandalas. And we need to make a vajra dance. And we play the musics and we chant the prayers and the sadhanas with the beautiful melody. All are needed. That's true. And uh, anyway, I think that's all for today.